Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how to perform GraphRack with Llama 3.1, a local running model. So first, what is GraphRack? GraphRack is an approach to perform retrieval augmented generation by taking the relationship of entities and documents into consideration. Key concepts are nodes and relationships. Nodes represent entities or concepts extracted from data chunks such as people, organizations, events or locations. In a knowledge graph, each node contains attributes and properties that provide more context about the entity. We then define the connections between nodes. These can include various types of associations, such as hierarchical, like parent-child, temporal, before and after, or causal, cause and effect. Relationships also have properties that describe the nature and the strength of the connection. When you've got a lot of documents, you end up with a nice graph describing the relationship of all documents. Let's have a look at a very simple example. In a dataset, nodes could represent entities like Apple and Tim Cook, while a relationship might describe Tim Cook as the CEO of Apple. That approach is really powerful, but one massive drawback is that it's very expensive to compute, since you have to extract entities from each document with an LLM and then compute a relational graph. This is why it's great to use that approach with a model that runs locally, like Llama 3.1. We're gonna use Llama in combination with Olama in this video and Neo4j as graph database. We will create a graph about information of a large Italian family who owns multiple restaurants in different places. So many, many relationships to model there. To use Llama in combination with Olama, please go to olama.com, create an account, it's totally free, and then click on the top right on download. Then you can download Olama for your operating system. After downloading the installer, or if you use Linux, then it will automatically install. Then open a terminal, I use the PowerShell for that, and then you can run the Olama CLI. This will be automatically installed. And if you run Olama minus minus help, you can see that I get an output, so Olama was correctly installed. The next step is now to run a model. So you can get models here in this model section. And this, in this example, we use Llama 3.1. So we click on Llama 3.1, and then here is the command we can just copy. We can choose between three different models, one with 8 billion, one with 70 billion, and one with 405 billion parameters in size. So of course the size differs. The smallest one is 4.7 gigabytes. The 70 billion is uh, 40 gigabytes. And the largest one is even 231 gigabytes. So I will stick with the smallest, but to be honest, if we really want a good result, then try to run it with the 70 billion parameters model. But my computer, to be honest, is a little bit too old to run that model locally. Okay, so to run the model, just now click on the model you want, copy the command and go to the CLI, copy that. And this will now download the model if you don't have it yet. And then just wait a few seconds. So I could now use Olama like this. Hello, how are you? And communicate with the model like this. So this is not what you want. So we just gonna close it and use it in combination with Langchain. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and here on the left you can see multiple files that we will use. So first, before we go into the code, we will set up Neo4j. I created a Docker Compose YAML for you. So what we're gonna do is, the, is that we will use the Neo4j folder. Inside here is a jar file that is used to make use of a plugin that we need to create our graph. So to create our database, just run docker compose up and this will set everything up for you and will just work out of the box. Okay, this may take a few seconds and after a few seconds you will see that the database is running. So we can already go to our uh, notebook and first install the required packages. So we need Langchain, of course, we need Langchain OpenAI, Langchain Olama, this is just used as fallback, and also Langchain Experimental because the graph solution is currently in the Langchain Experimental um, package. We also install Neo4j, and here this Y files Jupyter Graphs is very well suited to display graphs in a Jupyter notebook. So execute that line of code. Okay, so after installing the required packages, we can now import the required classes. So we use multiple classes here from Langchain, like the runnable pass-through, chat prompt template, an output parser, and so on. 
We also import Neo4j Graph. This is in the Langchain community package, the end is graphs module. We also import chat OpenAI as fallback model for chat Olama. In the Langchain experimental package, we've got a graph transformers module, and from there we import the LLM graph transformer. That makes use of quite some complicated prompt to convert the data in a way that we can store it in a graph database. So we will also import the graph database from Neo4j and not only use Neo4j as graph database, but we can also use it as a normal vector database. So we make a hybrid approach. We use graph knowledge and also the more standard way to search documents, which is currently just use an embedding model and then search for the most similar documents to a special query. So this is why we make this hybrid. We're also gonna use the .env package and load our environment variables here in our Jupyter notebook in the .env file. There is an OpenAI API key, there is a Neo4j URI, a Neo4j username, and a Neo4j password. You can just use that as it is, but in the repository it will just be called env.example. Okay, next step is to create a connection to our database. So we instantiate the Neo4j graph class, and this will set up a connection to Neo4j. And now we can use this dataset, dummytext.txt. Here you can see that this describes a lot of information about this Italian family, different names, different connections, here like Antonio's sister, Amico's grandmother, and so on. This should all be represented in our graph later. And we just gonna use a text loader to load that into memory. And after loading that, we're gonna use a text splitter to create multiple chunks from that. So that's a very standard way to split the information into smaller chunks that an LLM can easier work with. So we're gonna load that. And now we're gonna set up our LLM graph transformer. This graph transformer is responsible for turning the documents in this way into a way that Neo4j can work with. So based on the environment variable here, LLM type, Currently, I didn't set one, so the default is Olama. We're gonna instantiate chat Olama or chat OpenAI. And then we're gonna pass that to the constructor of LLM graph transformer. The convert to graph documents method will then create all of the relationships between our chunks. So we pass in the documents, which we created here, and this may take some time to compute. So even for this quite small example, it took me like three minutes. So lean back and wait a little bit. Okay, so it took me more than three minutes to compute the graph. And first time I even ran into a key error. So, but now it worked. And I'm gonna show you how the graph nodes look like. So this is a graph document. Here you can see that we've got a nodes attribute, which is a list of different nodes with an ID. We can see that the ID is like, like this, Amico's family, type is family, and then we've got more and more nodes like love, concept, node, tradition, and then we also got the relationships. And this will all be stored in Neo4j. So currently we did not store it yet. So we have to run the add graph documents method first. We have to provide the graph documents and now we store everything in Neo4j. This may also take a few seconds. And after storing the documents in the database, we can now visualize them. So we first have to connect to the database. We will use the driver method where we pass in our URI. This is stored in the Neo4j URI environment variable. We also have to provide the username and password for authentication and create our driver instance. Then we create a new session. And then we can use the run method of our session to run a query against Neo4j. So we will use this yeah, quite cryptic prompt if you're not used to Neo4j but this actually just means that Neo4j should return all pairs of nodes connected to a, by a relationship of type mentions. And we want to return S, R, and T. So S is the starting node, R is the end node, and T is the relationship. And yeah, then we can run that method and actually visualize our graph. Okay, now we can scroll a little bit down and here we can see this is the complete knowledge graph of our documents. As you can see, this is quite a lot and we can drill down just by scrolling a little bit. And here we can see some entities like Pietro, this is a, a person. And we can see that Pietro loves kitchen, loves the sea and is the parent 
of another person, of Sophia. And yeah, so we can see different entities are modeled with different relationships. And at the end, we get this very large knowledge graph. And I think even for our small data set, this is actually quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, I really like this kind of graphs, to be honest. So let's now see if that's not just beautiful, but actually also helpful. Okay, so the next step is to create a vector store from Neo4j. So we will use the Neo4j vector class and use the from existing graph method where we only pass the embedding model. And from our existing graph, we will now compute the embeddings. So we can also perform vector search. And then at the end, we will turn that vector index in a retriever to have a standardized interface for that. Okay, so now we've got a graph database where we stored our documents and also our normal vector store. Now we can perform the retrieval augmented generation. So since we use a graph database, we need to extract entities from a query to actually perform the retrieval step from our graph database. So the graph database needs this kind of entity. So we will create a custom model called entities, which inherits from base model. And we want to extract the entities. And this can be done by just providing this attribute, which is a list of strings. And here's a description for the LLM. So we want to extract all persons, organizations, and business entities that appear in the text. Then we create a chat prompt template. And the system message is you're extracting organizations, persons, entities from the text. Then we provide the user input and just uh, pipe our prompt template to the LLM with the structural output, which makes use of this entities class. So I'm going to show you how that looks like. So we've got our entity chain and we can invoke it like this. So we pass in the question, who are Nonna Lucia and Giovanni Caruso? So we've got two names here and we can access the names attribute after performing that invoke method. And we can see that the output of this chain is a list of strings with just the names. And these are used to then query the graph database. So this is done here. So first step is in this function, graph retriever, to first extract the entities and then run a query against Neo4j. And I'm gonna show you how that looks like at the end. So we're gonna create that functions. And now we've got our graph retriever function where we only pass the question, entities will be extracted and then DB will be queried. So we ask who is Mo uh, Nona Lucia. And if we run that, we can see all of the nodes and connections that Nona Lucia has. So influenced Caponata, taught grandchildren, influenced fresh pasta, influenced Amico, and is the matriarch of the family. Okay, interesting. And next step is that we create a hybrid retriever. So we use the graph retriever and our vector store retriever. So we define a function called full retriever where we set in our graph retriever function and also use the vector retriever and use the invoke method of that. And we get out the most relevant documents. So we've got our relationship graph and the most relevant documents by cosine similarity. At the end, we will combine all the docs and return the final data set. So this is what this full retriever will achieve. And then we create a final chain. So this is a normal rack chain. You will find that kind of chain in almost every beginner tutorial. So we've got two variables called context and question. So context is the output of a vector store or any other database. And then we've got the question. All of that will be sent to the LLM. We will create a template and then use the language and expression language here to create our final chain. This will create a runnable parallel. And I'm gonna show you the invoke method here. So we just use a string input and we pass that to the full retriever function and keep the question unchanged and then pass context and question to our prompt to fill out these variables. And after filling out these variables, we will pass everything to the LLM and pass the output of the LLM to a string output parser. So let's create that chain. And now we can ask who is Nonna Lucia? Did she teach anyone about restaurants or cooking? So something about relations. And we can see the answer is Nonna Lucia is the matriarch of the Corusio family and a culinary mentor. She taught her grandchildren the art of Sicilian cooking. And yeah, that's actually correct. Okay, so that's it. This is how you can perform graph rec with Neo4j. I hope you liked it. And if yes, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. 
See you in the next video. Bye bye.